I'd like to do is ask you concerning the memory game, number one, um, assuming you've worked on it some, what discovery have you made? What is something that you thought of, that you found out, that you discovered in your code that you think it would benefit for the other people in the class to, uh, to hear? I know, William, you said you talked about something, and maybe other folks have too. So I'd like to start out talking about that. And then I would like to ask you what you're currently having the most trouble with. And we can talk about those things. How's that sound? Do you want to start out? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, I found a tutorial on how to uh, make the uh, looping through the image views dynamic. Uh, something about. You emailed it to me, right? I did. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull it up. Something about find me by rd, r dot id dot. That image zero is expecting an int, so trying to tie a string to an int. I couldn't figure it out. So okay. Straight to do that. Okay. The id actually is an int. It looks like an it's the syntax is an id, but it translates to an int. And so yeah, if you have like a string that contains something, how do you turn it in there? So let me pull up the tutorial that he found, and then let me try to adapt that in my code. So. I think I can find it. Well, let me let me look right now. Um, now your name is William, but you go by Steve, right? Okay. I couldn't recall if, if it was that or the other way around. What I said. You're right. Exactly. Uh, that's why probably because it was in my face every time I look at your email. It, you know, I was thinking William. All right. Okay. So the question is here. How do we iterate through all the views programmatically? I'm sure you don't get this problem exactly, so let me give you a better understanding, blah, 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 blah. Find view by ID, button one, button two, button three, and so on. What if we have 100 buttons? All right, what is it that we can do? We can make a string, and if we have this simple get resources, blah, 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 get identifier button ID package name, that will then go and that will convert that string of the button ID into a resource ID that we can use to address it. Let me go and do it in this case. Um, let's say, let me pull up let me pull up my little coin thing. And if you notice, I'm going to create a variable. number of coins. And I'm going to set that equal to four because I've changed it to have four coins. Because I also want to ask, answer your question, what happens if you delete, if you make something invisible? What happens, does it? So, so I did look at that too. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put this in a for loop that says four for int i equals zero, i less than 
number of coins. I plus plus. I'm going to go and I'm going to add the coin here. No, I can't. Okay. All I did is I added a variable for number of coins, and I'm starting my loop here. So I'm going to go and I'll create this guy. Set image I. View sub I. Click listener. All right. So now the trick that we have to do is we have to be able to translate a string that contains an ID to a numeric ID. So we're going to grab these couple of pieces of code here and here. So, string, I'll change this to image ID, equals image plus I plus 1. Let's make sure I can do that because my images do start with image 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, I didn't start numbering, it was zero. I want to make sure. All right, so string image ID equals image plus image plus I plus one. So that will give us um, one through four instead of zero through three. Then I'm going to say int resource ID equals get resources, get identifier, and I'll put this in the string, which is our image ID. And then, I'm sorry, it's not image, it's coin. So image ID equals coin plus that, blah, 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 blah. Find view by ID, res ID. Okay. And what am I missing? Oh, there we go. Now, I'm going to go and I'll comment this out for now. And if I run that, everything should still work the way I thought it would. Although it's giving me a little squiggly. It seems to indicate that there's an error. Let's try it. Build failed. Cannot find get package name. All right. So that must be elsewhere in our code. Isn't that a, a scope thing? Is it your fragment? Ah, very good. How did you resolve that? Get activity? Okay. Thank you. All right, that looks better. I 
I didn't change the variable name. I changed the. I just changed the constant. Okay, so here we have, if I click this, it flips that coin. If we click this, it flips that coin. So I got rid of all the hard, all the hard coding of the, the four things and replaced it by a neat, nice little loop that goes and loops through those. So that's a very good discovery. All right. Uh, my discovery, all right, was I find, found that if you simply set the visibility to false or invisible, it um, gets rid of um, the, the image, but it still takes up the space. So if I run this, Click that, I can get rid of it, and it stays there. I mean, it doesn't stay there. The other ones stay there. The other ones stay where they belong. No, in my in my app, I have hard coded two rows with uh, four things. Uh huh. Okay, so you. So I did it differently. What I did was I, I created an invisible image of the same size. Okay. And I just added that piece of place. Okay, and, and that works just as well. If you want to send me the code, I can look at it to see um, what we can do. Because it, there's part of me that says it shouldn't matter whether it was hard coded or dynamic. If you dynamically generated the same thing that I have hard coded, it should behave the same. But there might be something I'm not thinking of. So if, if you're interested in that, looks sounds like you have a workaround for it. So yeah, it, yeah if you're interested in, in could I get the other one to work, feel free to send me that, and I'll, I'll take a look at that. OK, um, discovery that you made. Does anyone else want to? Jeff, do you want to? Well, I discovered what I did, but apparently it's not necessary. What's that? Well, yeah, my kind of lady rows out dynamically, right? Okay. So I can just uh, create any size I want. Right. If I want to eliminate it, if I want to set it invisible, it's shifted. So I just simply uh, put it invisible. I create an image of the same size as the invisible. Okay. And that's, that's, that's a valid approach, too. That's like the days of the uh, one pixel. The one pixel, uh, uh, yeah, the spacer GIF, exactly. Um, a anything else that you want to go over that you have discovered? I did things a little differently. I, instead of uh, creating one listener, I just attached a listener object to every image view. And then that way, when you click on the image, it basically knew that it was. So, what information are you getting from it? Well, so when you click on an image, you right. basically are finding what card it is by associating that to an array of uh, cards with the same right. index. But what I did was I created a custom uh, listener. Okay. And then, the list, and then when I when you attach the listener to the, to the view. Right. My custom listener takes as an argument to its constructor the card itself. Okay. So that when you click on the image, you know, the, the listener for that view has a card on the image. Okay. Excellent. So you don't have to have maintain that. And, and so, and so you, you, you still have a card object, but that card object gets passed to the listener. Yeah, I mean, custom listener. Structure it takes a card object. Gotcha. So then the, in the view, you have a, you know, you, attack, you assign a listener to it. Okay. You just create a new, actually an anonymous right. instance of that listener passing the card object. And then when you okay. click on the view, it basically, the listener already has a card object. Already has a card object. Uh, X. 
excellent. Good, uh, good approach. That's an alternative. That is, that's an alternative to mine. Uh, mine, there's one lister and it doesn't have much uh, in it other than it finds the view that was clicked on and then uses the associative array to do that. Anyone else have discoveries that they made that they want to review? Okay. If you want to play a sound as a media player, what I found is, is that it's pretty easy to use it to play a sound, but after a while it stops working and it turns out that you actually have to uh, reclaim the resource every time. So you have to, on a media player, the call is uh, create, just pass the context of the sound, uh, and then start to play the sound. Okay. If you don't release that after a while, it's not Okay. It like seems to like it, like a memory leak almost. It seems like to accumulate. Yeah, the resources get used up pretty quickly. Okay. And then after I found that, if you, if you implement that uh, set on completion listener, and then there's a method in that that's on completion, and then inside there you just do a Too. At first, I thought, well, the on create should be done outside the. And I'm doing that every time, and I thought, well, if I do that once, and I did all that, and still fail. But as it turns out, we have to release that resource every time, basically. Because it doesn't take long before it just runs out. Sure. Let's do that.
one that you intended to send? Just paste it in uh, there. Okay, there we go. All right. So, what's M card? here is playing a, a playing a sound seems to be pretty straightforward but you got to remember the gotcha of the releasing yeah. that when, when you do it other discoveries that we want to talk about what about problems what problems are you running into now Refresh my memory. Like, um, um, you know how in the in the settings view, there's like a list of preferences that you yes. can display. There's no um, there's no view for that includes a slider, so I have 
to like make make my own and like my own custom preference view. Okay. And so I'm having trouble like tying them tying them all together and into into the sentence page, and so that it's re readable in the in the Java code. Okay. A uh, couple couple thoughts on that. My first gut reaction is, you must want a slider really bad, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> because my inclination would be, if it proved to be difficult, I'd say, well, okay, gee, I wish I had a slider, but I don't, so I'll come up with something else, all right? Um, do you have a working now? Do, do you have that aspect of it, the slider working? Yeah, I have the, yeah, I have the, I have the layout completed. Yeah. Okay, the layout for the preferences. Yeah. So what, what was the, what was getting, what got you over the, the hurdle that you were running into? Well, I haven't gotten completely over the hurdle yet, but it's mostly just um, having a display into the, into the. Make sure I'm understanding um, this. Let me go and delete this guy. I'm going to go to the flag quiz where we had a settings view before, and maybe that'll make it more clear to me and the other folks here. So what you're saying is in this example. We had in our resources, <coughs> we had fragment set, um, activity setting. Is that it? No. I think so. Yeah. Uh, content setting. Oh boy, where am I? I'm losing that here. Activity settings contains content. Setting. Oh, the, the layout XML, right, right, preferences XML, there we go, there we go. Okay, so, let's look at this settings, and it is a settings activity fragment, it's a preferences fragment, it's different than everything else, and our content settings contains the XML, see where that gets assigned. Oh, add preferences from resource. There we go. And that is that. So what you're saying is, what are the options that we do have if we don't have a slider? We have a list preference and a multi-select list preference. A list preference would allow us to define a certain number of preferences that we would have in a um, a list, all right, and the entries and the entry values come from the array. So in this case, the array list is two, four, six, and eight. So what, and then that simply is used to populate the number of choices that you have, and you can select one. The difference between the two is that the one is a multi-list, uh, multi-select list where you can select multiple things. The other one is a single list. So let's refresh our memory with this one.
So if we go to settings, we click on that, we get a list. Two, two, two. two, four, and six, and you can only pick one of them. You click regions, and since it's multiple select, you get check boxes. Now, you wanted there to be a slider. A slider for what? Um, for, um, for the percentage of cards to, um, to, to cut from the deck the, um, in front of the, for blackjack. Like, like if, you're using, if you're not using the, the, like if you're using the same deck between games, yeah. then there will be a setting for like, like how many cards you want to cut off from the deck. Okay. That's so that's why I intend the slider for, um, to control. Okay. So it'll be hard to do, to like, do like from zero to sixty percent, um, sixty percent of all the cards. Okay. All right. Um, let's look to see what's available in this preferences. preference is one of the things it extends dialogue preference base class for preference objects that are dialogue based I'm trying to see what are subclasses of this of known direct subclasses, edit text preference. So you could have used a, an edit text for that. Uh, a list preference or multi-select list. Those are your three built-in choices, all right? Um, and again, you wanted a slider, so you had to figure out a way to get the slider to work. Um, let's look at preference and see what we have here. I know that there is a way to get an there because I've seen Okay, but are those preferences? Yeah, in, in the, in the, like in the, the system settings. Are those preferences that were implemented this way? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's okay. Um, it looks like there is a dialogue preference. From this are subclasses. Dialogue preference, preference group, ringtone preference, to state preference and checkbox preference, edit text preference, list preference, multi-select, preference category, preference screen, and a switch preference. Um, this is a case of I don't know whether I admire, you know, not, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I don't know if I admire you for wanting to try this or if I'm going to say, well, look, sometimes it's better to tweak the design to take the path of least resistance. Could you boil this down to a choice between four or five alternatives? Yeah, that doesn't give you the degree of control that you might want, but um, is it really important for the property that you're doing to give a choice between 59 and 60? Or would maybe, you know, you said it was a percent, maybe in increments of 10%, 10, 20, 30, that way there'd be 10 choices or something like that. Okay. So that would be something I would consider when you're doing it. If it's relatively easy and you can do it, fine. But unless there you have a client insisting that you do something, if you're the designer of it, you know, you might want to go easy on yourself. That's a valid programming choice, you know. All right. And, you know, as an academic, I can say, well, you know, whatever it is, we can program it. And that's true. But at what cost? You know, if you end up spinning your wheels on this, um, it can cause difficulty. That being said, I'd be glad to take a look at what you have. So feel free to email it to me 
and we can take a look at it and um, maybe see uh, something. Maybe I can see something um, that you missed or, or I can help you out with that. Other difficulties that you're running into. As far as um, what you're looking for Thursday, um, I have a, a basic game fragment. Uh-huh. Doom things. <laughs> are, you, are you looking for the preferences fragment as well? Nah. Okay. Nah, no, no need to worry about the preferences fragment. Um, you know, um, I could even see that one waiting till week three. You know, get the basic game working and then give the bells and whistles. Again, you develop it in a way that makes sense for you, but I could see that one um, waiting. I might start it and not do anything. That's, that's always an option, or do a preference, choose between a lot of cards or a few cards, something like that might be good. Other questions slash problem areas. Just so that you know, what I plan on do Thursday is something very similar to this. Now, if you don't have anything to talk about, gee, I have to talk about something, right? So I might look at the next example and talk about that. I kind of don't want to until we're pretty well established down this path because I don't want to distract you with different stuff that isn't required for this. But on the other hand, um, you know, if I have lecture time, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of it. So uh, at least to introduce some things to you, um, and that's what we'll do next time. So bring your successes, bring your trouble areas to class on Thursday, just like we did today. If you want to present them instead of, like, having me present them, that's fine. You're welcome to do that. Uh, I just know some people aren't really big on speaking, even in a small public like this. Okay. Oh, good for you. Good for you. All right. Yeah, if you want to do that, you're welcome to do that. So that's all I had for today. Uh, we'll see you in lab.